Good afternoon. It's only about 104 in Texas right now, but the Word of God is always very refreshing. And we are going to study John chapter 16 today. Last week, Jesus told us that he was the true vine and we were the branches and we were to ab abide in him, which means to obey him. Jesus is still talking to the disciples and he says, I have told you these things so that you won't abandon your faith. He knew that these disciples were going to scatter when he was crucified on the cross. He forgave them in advance for it, and he still saw the potential inside of each one of them to still carry on his work. He had already forgiven them for their unfaithfulness, but they didn't realize that they were going to be unfaithful. And he's trying to prepare them. He is explaining to them that they're going to be persecuted. And he says, uh, you will be expelled from the synagogues and the time is coming when those who kill you will think that they are doing a holy service for God. That's what the Crusades were all about. Uh, they thought that they were trying to uh, convert the world to Christianity, but they did it through horrible persecution. The Spanish Inquisition tortured many, many people until they converted to Christianity. And that is not Jesus's way, that's man's way. Paul in the Bible, we're gonna learn about real soon, he was a Jewish priest. He was a leader. He was in the Sanhedrin. And after Jesus was crucified, he made it his mission to kill Christians who he thought were heretically upbraiding or, or trying to go against what God's laws were until he had an encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus. And then his heart changed because the Holy Spirit of God was put inside of him. We're gonna learn more about that today. Not about Paul, but about the Holy Spirit leading you into all truth. Jesus says, um, this is because they will kill you thinking that they are doing a holy service because they have never known the Father or me. Yes, I'm telling you these things now so that when they happen, you will remember my warning. I didn't tell you earlier because I knew I was gonna be with you a little while longer and I could tell you later. Jesus only explained things to the disciples as they were able to understand it. Back in the Old Testament, people didn't have the understanding that you could convert your enemies they just had the understanding that you were to conquer your enemies and kill them. Jesus came to bring a whole new way of doing things. I'm so glad. Jesus says, but now I am going away to the one who sent me. And not one of you is even asking where I'm going. Instead, all you're doing is focusing on your grief because I've told you that I'm going. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away because if I don't, the Holy Spirit can't be sent back to you. If I do not go away, if I do go away, then I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and he will convince the world of God's righteousness and he will also convince the world of the coming judgment. It's the job of the Holy Spirit to convince you that you're wrong, that you're in error, and to convict you of that error so that you will change, so that you will understand if you don't, there's gonna be a lot of consequences. John uses a word in the Hebrew text and it's elichin. It's not a word that we use. But it would be like being in a court and there being a cross-examination, trying to convince the person that's on the stand that 
what they thought had happened wasn't really ha what happened. And to convict them in their hearts that the truth is the most important thing. And that's what the Holy Spirit always brings, is the truth. And of course, the judgment that's going to happen if they don't snap to the truth. The Holy Spirit is very patient with us. And Jesus had to leave his physical body. In his physical body, he was limited to time and space. But when he went through the cross and went back to the Father, he was able to send the same Holy Spirit back to us that was inside of him that helped him to understand all truth. And that's his job. Convicts us of sin and to convince us of Jesus's righteousness and of the judgment that's going to come. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Wow, Jesus just summed it all up right there and said the world's sin is that they refuse to believe in me. He says righteousness is available because I go to the Father and you will see me no more. And judgment will come because the ruler of this world has already been judged. All sin will be judged. But Jesus is saying now the ruler of this world, and of course we know that to be Satan, he's already been judged. There is so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. Remember, Jesus only tells us what we are able to handle at that moment. But he says, when the spirit of truth, talking about the Holy Spirit, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He doesn't call the Holy Spirit an it because it's not a thing. It is a person, the person of the Holy Spirit of God. He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard from the Father about me. He will tell you all about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine, Jesus says. And then he says, this is why I said, the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. The Holy Spirit has an awesome job to lead us into all truth. And he does it well. And when you ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, he puts that Holy Spirit inside of you. And the Holy Spirit does his job real well. But he is a gentleman. He does not come in where he is not invited. So you have to invite the Holy Spirit in. That's part of that taking every thought captive to Christ. When you have a decision to make, when you're not sure what the right thing is to do, the Holy Spirit's right there 24-7. All you've got to do is ask. And when you ask, you receive an answer. Jesus says, In a little while you won't see me anymore, but a little while after that you will see me again. He's talking about when he is crucified, you won't see him for three days. But then he reappears to the disciples, and they get to see him again. Some of the disciples were asking each other, What does he mean when he says, In a little while you won't see me, but then you will see me, and I'm going to the Father? And what does he mean by a little while? We don't understand. And Jesus realized that they were wanting to ask him these questions, but maybe they were afraid that, Jesus would judge them because he had already told them the answer, but they still weren't getting it. <clears throat> so he says, are you asking yourselves what I meant? I said in a little while you won't see me, but a little while after you will see me. I tell you the truth. You're going to weep and mourn over what's going to happen to me, and the world will be rejoicing because they have killed me. You will grieve but your grief will suddenly turn into wonderful joy and it will be like a woman suffering in the pains of childbirth. 
Once her child is born, her anguish gives way to joy because she has brought a new baby into the world. And that is so true. Every time I was delivering a child, I forgot how bad it was. And in the moment of delivery, I would be thinking, oh, man, I don't ever want to go through this again. But once that child was born into the world and I looked into its eyes, it was like, oh, I, I want to do this again. Not because of the pain, but because of the joy after. And that's what Jesus says. I endure the cross for the joy that comes after. You know, when I was when I was studying for this, God brought an image into my mind. If there was a fire and a father was inside a house trapped with his child, he would scoop that child up and he would run through that fire to deliver that child to safety. That's what Jesus did on the cross. He faced the pain which was an excruciating death, a criminal death, but he didn't see it as a shameful thing. He saw it as a way to get back to the Father, and it was just going to be a temporary thing. Whatever that Father would endure running through a fire to deliver his child was going to be a temporary thing that would be healed. And Jesus knew that the pain of the cross, though it was going to be hard, was going to be a temporary thing. And what was on the other side was that he was not only going to be obedient to the Father and make a doorway to the Father for everyone, but he was going to be able to go back to the Father through that doorway of the cross. So he didn't look at the cross like everybody else was looking at the cross right then. They saw it as a criminal death. Jesus didn't see it that way. He says, <clears throat> I tell you the truth, you will weep and mourn over what is going to happen to me, but the world will rejoice. You will grieve, but your grief will suddenly turn to wonderful joy. When they realized he was resurrected, they did become joyful. Just like once the baby is born, the mother is joyful. And you know, I didn't remember each time the pain because I had the joy of that baby in front of me. So Jesus gives an example that we can understand. Even if you're a male and you've never actually had childbirth, if you've been with your wife during that time of childbirth, you also, in the moment of labor, think, I don't want to ever go through this again. But wait, once the baby is born, you have joy. And so Jesus is giving them a metaphor that they can relate to and say, you're going to have that same kind of wonderful joy. So you have sorrow now, but I will see you again. And then you will rejoice and no one can rob you of that joy. At that time, you're not going to need to ask me for anything anymore. During the time that Jesus was with them, anytime they wanted something, they asked Jesus, you know, we need to pay the taxes. He goes, go down to the water and pick up the first fish you see. Look in its mouth. There's going to be a coin to pay the taxes. If they needed deliverance from the Sanhedrin that was jumping down their throat, Jesus would jump in and deliver them. They depended on Jesus for everything right now, but he's trying to tell them, once I'm gone, I make a doorway for you to go straight to the Father, just like I've been going straight to the Father. Because if you're in me and I'm in the Father, then you too are in the Father. At that time, you won't need to ask me for anything. I tell you the truth. You will ask the Father directly and he will grant your request because you use my name. Now, he was saying this before he went to the cross. So, he was trying, I have a friend that always says, Jesus isn't trying to do anything he did. So I'm remembering that right now. Jesus was telling them, this is the way it's going to be. Once I am no longer in my physical body, you can go directly to the Father and ask him anything in my name. 
you use my name because I'm the one that made you that, do that doorway to enter into the presence of the Father, but you've got direct access. You don't have to go through the mother of Jesus. You don't have to go through a saint. You just go to the Father. You haven't ever done this before. Ask using my name and you will receive and you will have abundant joy. Abundant joy. What does that word mean? Abundant. Um, doesn't end. Never stops. Overflows. Abundant joy. I have spoken of these matters in figures of speech up until now. But soon, I will stop speaking figurative, figuratively, and I will tell you plainly all about the Father. Then you will ask in my name. I am not saying I will then go to the Father on your behalf. The Father loves you dearly. And because he loves you dearly, you're going to be able to ask him for anything directly. And this is all because you love me and you believe that I come from God. Yes, I came from the Father into the world and now I leave the world and return to the Father. That was God's plan all along. I'm not yours for keeping here. I am the Father's and I will return to the Father just like you are the Father's now. And you will return to the Father as well. Then his disciples go, oh, goodness, at last you're speaking plainly and not figuratively. Now we understand that you know everything, and there's no need for us to question you any longer. From this, we believe that you came from the Father. They really thought they understood it all now. They had it all down, and everything would be beachy green. And Jesus said, do you really finally believe but the time is coming, and indeed, it is here right now, when you're going to be scattered, each one going his own way, leaving me abandoned, leaving me alone. They couldn't see that in themselves right now because they thought they had such allegiance to Jesus. But when you are put to the test, that's when your true nature shows up. That's when your weaknesses show up. And he said, but really, I'm not alone because the Father is with me. And people that say, I feel so lonely, they need to realize if they believe Jesus Christ was the Son of God, come here to pay for their sins, was crucified, dead, resurrected, went back to the Father, sent the Holy Spirit back to them, they can't possibly be alone because the Holy Spirit is with them all the time. I like that. He says, yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. And I have told you all of this so that you could have peace in me during all of this that's going to happen. He wanted them to remember God is on the throne and in control. And many times when we have trials and tribulations in our lives, we aren't peaceful because we get sucked into all the drama and the emotional stuff that's going on. And that is is not what Jesus died for. He died so that you could have that peace that he's giving to them and to us as a gift. And he's telling them right here. I've told you all of this so that you will have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. Some people have a belief that once they um, accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, their hard times are over. Oh, no. Their challenges are just beginning. But they have the Holy Spirit inside of them that will be right there with them. Just like Jesus says, the Father is right here with me. And when the Holy Spirit is sent to you, God the Father and me and the Holy Spirit will be right there with you all the time to give you peace, to give you counsel, to give you everything you need, all the supply to have victory. He had victory on the cross. The Holy Spirit gave him courage and gave him victory. And when that Holy Spirit is inside of you, guess what? 
you have access, abundant access to courage and to victory, just like Jesus. And that's why he says, you can have peace in me because he did this so that we could have it. But most people don't get that. And the disciples didn't get it either because when he was crucified on the cross, they did go into sorrow and they did all scatter and none of them remained faithful to him. Not even John, the one that wrote this book. But Jesus knew that was gonna happen, like I said earlier. And he forgave them for their weaknesses and he forgives us for our weaknesses also. And he's always right there to lend a helping hand and say, come on, you can do this. I know you can because I put the potential inside of you to be able to have victory. Now let me help you. That's what a lot of us struggle with. Letting the Holy Spirit help us. Sometimes I have to ask him over and over again to help me. And that doesn't mean that he's not helping me. It's that I'm not letting him. I'm a big girl. I can do it all by myself. That's my pride. And when it comes to the Holy Spirit, pride is not your ticket to him. But an humble surrendering of your weaknesses to be able to hand off your weaknesses and receive your strength. That's the way the Holy Spirit works with us. And it's a very good way to work. Jesus says, take heart because I have overcome the world. He's made a way for us to have that victory. Now, what you gonna do next time you have a trial or tribulation? What you gonna do next time something comes up before you that you don't like? Are you gonna go before the Father? and say, I need help. And he's gonna go, your helper is right there. I've given you all the supply you need. Like my son Gabriel says, you don't need anything if you have Jesus. If you have Jesus, you have everything you need. I love you all very much. I really love being able to share this word with you. And I pray, in the name of Jesus, that you're able to absorb it and understand it. That's the Holy Spirit's job to help you understand what the truth is. And I've shared truth with you today. And I encourage you to share it with someone else. You take care. Stay cool, even in 104 degree heat. I love you very much. And I'll see you next week in the garden with Jesus for chapter 17 of John.